Welcome guys, part number 3 of this series of video. Now the part 3 is very simple, is how to deploy an APM at the client and resource server. So it means that the APM will protect the backend application. Okay, I have an application on premises or in the cloud. And I want to protect the application with APM for authentication, to authenticate users. So far, we are used to deploy SAML, SAML service provider, but with some constraints, limitation, where we need to share metadata, we need to share the certificate, we sign the, we sign the, the insertion with the, with the IDP, with auto Company Connect, there is no certificate, there is no claims like that. So now, uh, my use case is very simple. I have one application and I want to authenticate users toward Google. That's it, okay? Uh, in a different use case where uh, my application protected by APM will only be a resource server and perhaps my the client could be a partner, okay? So a partner could have a client, an application, client, requesting access to one of my applications on-prem and I need to authenticate this request from this partner application. This is a different use case where the client and the resource are separated. This, this is what we did in, in part one and part two of the video. Okay, I use OIDC debugger as a client. Now it's everything on the same box, APM, client and resource server. So if you remember, this is our, uh, our VP uh, in APM, so the OSCOP, I remind you, is to validate access token. In Google, the access token is opaque, so I use an external method for validation. Now, I need to set my big IP APM as a client as well. So I need this, this APM to make the request to Google, authenticate the users, and reserve an access token. This is what we did in part two of the vid of this series of videos. So now let's get back to federation, our client resource server. I don't have to create a new provider. It's still the same. It's still Google authorization server, but I just need to create a new old server. I go to here and now create a new one. Google as client and resource server. Both. I request a token or I request tokens access and ID token, and then I will validate them, okay? So client and resource server, Google, uh, my, my provider that I just created, my forwarder, because I need to communicate with Google relation server. And as you can see, I have two things, okay? The client ID, the client secret. If you remember in the part two and part one, in, in order to exchange the authorization card for an access token, I need to print the, cl the client secret. So I need to provide to APM this client secret to make this exchange. So get, get back here, Postman, I copy my client ID. Okay, perfect. If you remember, the resource, the resource server ID is the same, okay, for, for, uh, for this use case, so I copy both. And then my key is here, my client secret ID is here. And then SSL profile in order to connect in HTTPS with, uh, with Google. And we're all good. That's it. So now let's back to the VP and use the second agent for OAuth, it's OAuth client. So, OAuth, OAuth as client, it's exactly like what I did with the uh, OpenID debugger in the previous video and the Postman, okay? One is receiving the authorization code, the other one was exchanging the authorization code to an access token. So, my server is the client RS, okay? The new one I just created. The ground type authorization code, I told you the more secure is one. OpenID Connect, yes. There is a point ID connect available in, in Google. Uh, so I use it. It's exactly the same authorization code. 
And then here I have to specify the request URI. So by default, F5 provide with all these profiles to make the request. So authentication redirect request. It's a Google one. This one, okay? The slash slash auto slash auth if you remember in part two video. The token request. When I have the authorization card, I want to to exchange this authorization code to an access token. It was a slash token, if I remember well. So Google token request. You can see several a lot. We can see a lot because we have joint and opaque. Google, if you remember, is only opaque. Very simple. The refresh token is not mandatory, but when the opaque token expires, okay, after one hour, one hour, you can request a new one uh, with the refresh token. So let's do it. It's free. <laughs> And the open ID user info request, this one, in order to have information regarding the user, because I am a client. So I should be able to say hello, Mathieu, okay, or hello, Batman, if you remember my previous video. And the scope, if you remember, it was profile. So I specify profile. So here I'm doing exactly what I did in open ID connect debugger but into the APM agent, okay? So after this box, I should have an access token and an ID token, okay? I don't care about the ID token because ID token is used only by the client, okay? So I will not validate it uh, at this moment, but here I will validate my OPAC token, my access token just reserved from the previous uh, box. And then, I did a small modification in the message box. As I am a client, I can use information from the ID token from OpenID. So we should see, let's try, congratulation, given name, the given name from the ID token, ID token given name, okay? Let's try. So, here I have an incognito window in order to do not have any session open or any cookie from Google. Uh, I think this is the best way to see the user experience. Here, let's see if I have a session. No session. Okay, so so let's make a test now. Uh, so I created a FQDN or IDC.jsr and when I arrive to my VIP here, I, the first action is to forward me to the, to redirect me to the authorization server. So Google. Let's authenticate. First factor authentication. Second factor authentication. No, first factor authentication, sorry. And here, the second one, okay? So you can see, I have a request on my phone to approve this. So it's FIDO2. I'm authenticated and I should arrive back to the big IP. And as you can see, congratulations, Mathieu, it works. So, if I have a look here, in the variables, as I am a client, I have information regarding OpenID Connect and the ID token. And from here, in the ID token, you can see my name, last name, you can see much more information regarding myself. It is a joy token. And this is why I can use this information inside the big IP, because I am a client. That's it, pretty simple.